Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of probability. And we are continuing our series of questions on JEE Advanced. So today's question, we have taken this up from the year 2009. And if I talk about the question here, the question is based on the concept of dice, which we have here. And in this question, we have been told that we are tossing a fair die repeatedly until a six is obtained. So if six is obtained on the first row of the die, then we stop. If I do not get a six on the first throw, I will throw the die again for the second time. And this will continue on and on. We will keep on tossing the dice until we obtain a six there. And we have also been told X basically denotes number of tosses required. And in this question on dice, basically there are three parts of the question. The first question that is given to us here is that probability that x greater sorry, x is equal to 3 equals so we have been asked to find the probability when x is equal to 3 means probability when three tosses are required to obtain a 6 on a die and the four options that are given to us in this question is 25 by 216 the second option given to us is 25 by 36 Third option given to us is 5 by 36. And the last option in this, which is given to us is 1 by 196. So we need to figure out what is the probability that number of tosses are required equal to 3. The second question which is given in the same is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. So now we have to find the probability that three or more tosses are required to obtain a six when you throw a die. And four options that are given to us, you know, this in 125 by 216. Then you have 25 by 36. Then you have five by 36. And the last option given is two. So these are the four options given to us. Third question based on this dice, given to us is we have been asked to find the conditional probability such that x greater than 6 occurs when it is given to us that x is greater than so probability of a given b is asked to us <coughs> the four options that are given to us in the same 125 by 216 Next option is 25 by 216. Third option given to us is 5 by 26. And the last option given to us is 2. So let's try to figure out this question with understand how to solve this type of questions. So we have been told that you will stop throwing a die until you get a 6. So probability of not getting a 6 when you throw a die. So out of six outcomes, you will not have six. So you can have any one of the remaining five outcomes as favorable ones. So probability of not getting a six is five by six. And probability of getting a six when you throw a die, that probability is one by six. Now, the first question, if I try to solve it, it's asking me what is the probability that three tosses are required to obtain a 6, that is x is equal to 3, means you require 3 tosses to get a 6. So basically in the first toss, when you throw a die, you won't get a 6. So probability of not getting 6 in the first throw, again then you will throw a die in the second time. So again not getting a 6. And the last outcome, you get a 6 in the third throw. Because it's told to me that three tosses are required to get a six. So probability of not getting six, we already know it's five by six. Again, five by six. 
and probability of getting a 6 is 1 by 6. So you get the answer as 25 pi 216. So the first part of the question, we get the answer as option A, 25 pi 216. So A is the correct answer for the first part of the question. Let's to solve for the second part. So second part, if I talk about it, is given to me probability that X is greater than or equal to zero. Means it tells us that we require three or more tosses to get a six on the die when it is thrown. So let's see. So I can use the opposite idea here. That would be much easier for us to solve. So we already know that the total probability is always equal to one. So one minus probability of getting the 6 on the first row of the die or getting the 6 on the second row of the die. So 1 minus probability of x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 gets us this probability which is asked for that is 3 or more choices are required. So 1 minus probability of x equal to 1 means you're getting 6 on the first row of the die and getting 6 the probability was 1 by 6 x equal to 2 means you get 6 on the second row of the die. So in the first row you won't get a 6, so it is 5 by 6. And on the second row you get a 6, so it is 1 by 6. So you get this 1 minus 1 by 6 is 5 by 6. Here you get this becoming 5 by 36. So if I multiply both sides by 6, you get it here as 6 fives are 30, 30 minus 6 minus 5. So you get the answer here as 25. So you get the answer for the question that three or more tosses are required when you throw a die. You get a 6. That answer comes out to become 25 by 36. And if you see the option that matches here with the question is B. So B is the correct answer for the question here. Now let's talk about the third part of the question. Conditional probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. When we have been told that x greater than 3. So basically it's telling me that what is the probability that 6 or more tosses occur if I already know that more than 3 tosses are going to occur there. So basically if I try to take out the formula here we already know probability of A given B occurs is equal to probability of A intersection B upon probability of B. So basically probability of whatever is common between A and B. So you get here probability of X greater than or equal to 6 and X greater than 3 and divided by probability of X. So you understand here that Six or more tosses are required, and here it is told to be three or more tosses are required. So the common solution, that is the intersection part, I understand. It is nothing but probability of six or more tosses are required to solve the question. You get a six when you throw a die, and probability that x is greater than b. So those are the ideas that you can use here. So let's find both of these ideas separately, and then we'll solve this. So probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. So you understand that probability of x can be equal to 6, x equal to 7, x equal to 8. This goes on and on till you throw a die. So infinite times you are throwing a die until you get a 6. To get a probability of x equal to 6, we know for the first 5 throws, I should not get a 6. So it will be 5 by 6 raised to 5. And in the 6th throw you get a 6. So 1 by 6. For x equal to 7 you understand. You should not get a 6 for the first 6 throws. And in the 7th throw you get a 6. Again for 8. Get 4 7 times not a 6. The last throw you get a 6. This goes on and on till it. Now I understand here that. 5 by 6 or h25 into 1 by 6. If I take this part out common, in the first, you don't have anything, so 1 is left. In the second, I can see that 5 raised to 5 has come out common, so we are left with 1, 5 here. 
and out of six raised to seven, six sixes have come out. So one six is left. Here again, you have five square and six square left. This goes on and on till it. Now, once I take out this common, I have five raised to five upon six raised to six. Because this was five sixes and this is the six to six. Here, if I see this becomes the sum of infinite terms of geometric progression, because I can see that there is a common ratio of 5 by 6, which is present between every two consecutive terms. So I understand I can apply the idea of sum of infinite terms of geometric progression, which is given by A upon 1 minus R. If A is your first term 1, 1 minus R means 1 minus 4. So you get this to become 5 raised to 5, 6 raised to 6, and 1 upon 1 minus 5 by 6, that is 1 by 6. So 1 by 6 when you're getting, understand, 1, 6 can be cancelled here, and you are left with 5, 5s and 5, 6s. So you get 5 by 6 raised to this is the idea for probability of x greater than or equal to 6. Now, if I have the probability of x greater than 3, that tells me it can be probability of x equal to 4, 5, 6. Again, the same thing that goes on till infinity. So, here if I see x equal to 4 means first three times you won't get a 6. And in the last time you get a 6 x equal to 5 means first 4 times you won't get a 6, the last time you get a 6 and further this goes on and on. Again you get this idea that 5 cube upon 6 raised to 4 is common. So you are left with 1 plus 5 by 6 plus 5 by 6 the whole square. This goes on and on. Okay. Again you have the sum of infinite terms of geometric progression, 5 cube by 6 raised to 4. Here you have this as 1 upon 1 minus 5 by 6. So you are left with 5 cube upon 6. So based because you have 5 cube upon 6 raised to 4, this becomes 1 by 6, 1, 6, 1, 6 gets cancelled out. So you get the idea that if I substitute this ideas here, I have from the first part 5 by 6 raised to 5. From the second part, I have 5 by 6 cube. This gets cancelled to give me 5 by 6 square, which is 20. So I get the answer for the sec third part of the question also as 25 by 26. You see the option that matches here is the option. So A, B, D are the respective answers for the three questions which are given to us on the dice. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions where they are telling us that you are going to throw a die until a uh, outcome is obtained. So this is how we solve this type of questions. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. Till then, you can like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, share these videos with your friends who are also involved in the preparation of JWT Advance. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving every day. Thank you.